Hey everyone, it's Ellen at Xbox On here. I recently went over to Remedy in Finland for a hands-on with their upcoming game, Quantum Break. I thought I'd show you a bit of my gameplay and tell you some things I learned while I was there. Okay, so you join myself and Jack Joyce in the University, one of the many places built in Remedy's world editor. Remedy have used this and built upon it since Max Payne, and ooh, look over on that blackboard, are these some Alan Wake references? Nifty, eh? Well, this lecture hall also shows us how the time powers are deeply interwoven with the story. If you use time vision, Jack can see time echoes. See certain things that happen leave echoes in time that Jack can use to help him, in this case to see where Monarch have taken his brother. Looks like they're taking him upstairs and sounds like they're heading towards the library to see the boss. Anyway, so let's follow them through this door and, oh, Okay, so now we've scared the crap out of ourselves and these gunmen, the game is going to teach us how Jack just did the time dodge. This is a hugely useful move, allowing you to dodge bullets and get to safety before you get shot to pieces. Quantum Break carefully introduces each move through specific parts in the story like this, so the player not only gets a tutorial on how to use the move, but it also fits in nicely with Jack's origin story, with him learning as the player learns. Unfortunately, as you fight these guys, you'll see that the environment around you isn't as fortunate as Jack with his dodging abilities. You can see the bullets and grenades being thrown around the room, destroying some of the lovely things around you. As you try to dodge everything being thrown at you, shelves are being blown to smithereens, and individual books can even be shot off the shelves. Their sacrifices are not in vain as everything feels believable. Now, to take out these final players, we're going to utilise Jack's different powers to help us get some bullets into these Monarch employees. I have to say, I love the slow-mo effect when you take out the last guy here. Take out these last guys who are about to come in through this door, we can use the time dodge to get right up into their faces for a surprise attack. Oh, oh, here we go, and that's the last time you'll mess with Jack Joyce. Remedy have worked extremely hard on motion capture to make the world of Quantum Break seem as real as possible, using real actors to bring a full performance to the game and to tie it into the live shows. As you're introduced to Jack's abilities, both his and Will's reactions feel authentic. Even with no dialogue, you can tell what they're thinking thanks to their facial expressions and body language. You can almost see Jack's thought processes as he realises what he can do and what he must do to save his brother. It's really well done and paints a great believable origin story. Motion capture was also used to help get authentic movement from the actors within gameplay. One prime example is in a section where Jack and Will have to hide to avoid the Monarch guards. Their movement as they move into the vents helps build up the tension as they move as quietly but as quickly as possible. Ultimately, this little section is a break in combat so Will can fill Jack in on his side of the story. But by framing it like this and capturing excellent natural performances from Sean Ashmore and Dominic Monaghan, it allows it to be an extra tense moment in the game. Oh, glad to be out of there. Another example is when a time stutter occurs and players are introduced to Jack's ability to unfreeze people. Jack's uncertainty is shown by his movements and when Will is able to move again, his stumble into the stutter and his reaction feel genuine. You can also see here how Remedy then seamlessly moves from this animation into the gameplay as Will continues to lead Jack through the university. Finally, I want to show you all just how good Remedy are at using their talents to create engaging cutscenes and suck you into the game and its story. There's so much expression, particularly in the eyes, that sometimes you forget you're watching an animation at all. I mean, just look at how they've captured Aidan Gillen's evil knowing look. This, along with the camera work, really puts you in the heart of the action. To help really immerse players into a world of time manipulation, Remedy have put a lot of effort into the music and sound. To show you what I mean, here's some gameplay. To make it easier to deal with this guy here, I used Jack's time shield. You might notice that everything sounded slightly different. The alarm noise was muffled, the sounds from Jack's gun were slightly distorted, and you really felt like you were in a bubble. Now, here is where I can show you some really cool sound stuff. As the vehicle crashes through the gates, a time stutter occurs. Time comes to a complete standstill, so sound will move differently here. Not only do we have the shattering sound of time breaking down, but Jack's footsteps echo as well as his voice. Pretty nifty. Now, here we're about to face some slightly different enemies. See, Monarch have developed some special tools so they can move in time stutters just like Jack and are fairly immune to his powers. They can even move as fast as him, making them very tricky to deal with compared to other enemies. Now, as we fight these guys, listen closely to the sound effects and the music and how they change. As I try to get out of the way of the bullets being shot at me just here, you can hear that the music is quite echoey and spacey, 
and as I try to use time stop on this enemy and he dodges out the way, the music is also affected. Sound is also heavily tied to the visuals, so as I drop down here, you'll see a ripple reflecting the sound there. Now to help me spot mnemonic enemies a little better here, I'm going to use time vision. You'll hear that the sound distorts outwards from Jack just as the visuals move out, and it really helps you feel like the power is emanating from him and having a real effect on time. Okay, now listen as this guy dies, you'll hear his screen is distorted. See, once you take out one of these enemies, they can't use their gear anymore and they get stuck in the stutter like anyone else. To reflect the effect of time around them, every gun has an alternate sound, whether that be in a stutter or when Jack uses a particular power. Now I'm about to find myself low on health, so I drop a time shield to see if it helps. You can hear the bubble distortion of sound still takes place even when you use it at a time stutter. Also as I use time dodge, you can still hear it has an effect on sound, slowing down all the sounds to reflect your speed. It seems that there's a bigger effect on the background music and sound when Jack is directly affected by, or at least very near, some kind of time manipulation, making it so that sounds and music are very much a personalised experience, more affected by things in the player's immediate vicinity. So the music is not only dynamic in that it changes once Jack starts or comes to the end of an encounter like he's about to now, but it's also dynamic on another level as it changes and reacts to the changes in time within the gameplay, helping to add weight to the powers in a way that simple dynamic music just could not. All in all, it's pretty nifty and also means that no two Quantum Break soundtracks will ever sound exactly the same, which I think is pretty cool. So that was a quick look at Quantum Break. Give us a thumbs up if you found it helpful. If you want to find out more, make sure you subscribe and check out our studio tour with my super cool snowball fight with Sam Lake. Thanks for watching. Bye!